Hi there, welcome back to this series of tutorials. So we now move to tutorial number four. This is a favorite favorite of mine. So basically we're going to work on uh, another easy problem. We have an analytical solution, so see the plus equation. And we have these boundary conditions and this is our analytical solution. So we're going to run the case with different meshes. We're going to see the influence of the meshes in the solution. We're going to see that our actual solution, we have a very good agreement. Remember that different measures, in this case, we have uh, Laplace where we have the gradients, we, are ne we, we need to do the corrections. But what is interesting here is that we need to look for more information because the agreement is very good. It's almost perfect. It's, uh, you have it here, different meshes, it's a triangular polyhedral, and you have the very good agreement. You need to plot also the analytical solution here, but you will have it, it's a almost perfect, it's a perfect agreement. But if we look behind the information, what we have behind doors, remember that here you have a gradient. So if you go back and look at here, now we're looking at the gradient, this is specific gradient sample in this line. And so he, here that now we see a difference. So in this case, we have a given correction that probably is not the best one. So now by adding the right correction, well, we don't have to fear when we add the right correction, the right correction, you are going to see that this error here that you have in the gradients, okay, that is not actual your solution that you are looking, but it's something that will influence will be reduced. It's still, even as that we see that we have these fluctuations here, we still have a very good agreement between the solutions, okay? So let's move to this tutorial. So go to the Laplace gradient and where you, wherever you extract the, this one and see that we have three folders. So the first one is X and mesh. Second one is triangular mesh. First one is the polyhedral mesh. Okay. And this is just quick to run everything automatically. So again, very simple problem, but you see that we start to look behind, behind doors what we have there. And so just to run this one, we'll run automatically the, tr the three cases. And then remember when you see this part of you here, means that you have a state that we can reproduce. In this case, we're going to open everything and do a comparison. But then you can go individually inside each folder directory and you have another part of you, another way to visualize the solution. So see that everything is running. So the first, uh, let me show you the script, how you can modify it. So here you have different skins. So the first run that we're going to do, see that we have in all of them is orthogonal Gaussian base method, orthogonal Gaussian base and orthogonal Gaussian base. So if you want to use something different, command this one and uncomment the one that you want to use. But see, remember that here we have instructor meshes in these two C2 and C3 and this method is not the best one. So now let's run, we have the solution. So yes. So it doesn't, it's not finding those folders. So now I want to load the state, open that one. And this is important. So here again, go search files under a specified directory and the directory where you have everything just okay. And it will look automatically for the files and it will reproduce this screenshot that you see here. So hexahedral mesh, triangular mesh, and polyhedral mesh. Okay, so everything is linked, so let me go. So you see that the solution in all cases is, this is the right one. There is no objections, there are differences, but there are very, very small differences. So here you have the legend. I think probably I need to switch the names, I don't recall, but okay, the, the black one should be the quad. Okay, but it's not a problem. And if you want to see the mesh, you go here. So see that we have here a quad mesh. This one will be this triangular mesh. And this one is this. Okay, so actually I need to show here. Okay, polyhedra. So yeah, I don't need to show it. In the cup plane, I need to show better in the face. And let me do it as well here. So let's see quad, triangular, and polyhedra. And again, you, you can imagine that the solution, the gradients are computed different for uh, according to the mesh. So our 
solution it is the same what we want t it is the same but when we look at the information that is behind that solution and if we look at the gradient you are going to see the differences there so let's change this one and now let me plot there this gradient okay let me plot in this one also that gradient and uh, let me plot in this one also that specific gradient okay so as you see okay hide the hide. let me hide the mesh hide the mesh and hide the mesh and see that your gradients are very similar but depending on the mesh you will have different corrections but remember in this case we didn't enable those corrections so if we plot now here and i want to plot this gradient in particular this gradient you can do the same with the x gradient and set you don't have anything because it's to the see that and remember this figure that look at how large this fluctuation so even if the solutions are similar the solution is a good one you have these gradients that might have an influence and sometimes this gradient can become very large and that will give you problems in this case it's not that much okay so how do we fix this problem we know the theory we know that now we need to enable some correction so let me go here c2 and instead of using that correction let me use in this case limited okay limited 0 0.5 and i got say the med uh, sorry, <laughs> Gauss uh, cell based uh, Gauss met method for the gradients. And the, here also, let me use instead of this one, let me use. So, see here that you have also the no, Gauss node base and the Gauss cell base. So, in this one, let me use the node base, which is more accurate than the cell cell base. The node base, remember that it's enabled, that will be SV skins full in this way point linear okay so let's run this case now with the new method and immediately we're going to see the improvement in the solution so again here now we're looking what is behind everything that is going on and in this case simple case those the, those oscillations with the gradient do do not have a big impact in the final solution but in some problems might have a very large impact so that is why we want to use the right method and smooth the gradients so again load state okay your directory we're here and see again a very good agreement of the solutions no problem there so now let's plot the gradients so I go this one we didn't do nothing there this one there and this one here okay and now immediately we see a difference that the gradients has been smooth a lot okay we, we have here a huge improvement Okay, sorry. We have a huge improvement all up in comparison to what we were having previously. Okay, so see that we reduce all the oscillations. So this is important of these non-orthogonal corrections and the and, and the method that you use to compute the gradients. We want to keep the gradients very smooth. We want to avoid here large oscillations that might affect your final solution. So I think this is a beautiful case. You can play around uh, with all the different uh, combinations. But again, conclusion will be uh, it's highly recommended to put a, a gradient limiter. In this case, I didn't add it. So a gradient limiter also will give you some improvement. And according to the quality of the mesh, the Laplacian and oh, and those so, so, so skins, so you will be you will need to adjust that one, but for most general meshes, industrial meshes, limited 0 0.5 and limited 0 0.5 is okay. And remember that also you should, you should also 
accompany that with, with this uh, in Norotora correction. Okay, so if you have uh, bad me very bad measures, so say more than 80, probably here would be better to put two or three, okay, to get better approximation of those gradients, in this case, these gradients here that we want to smooth. So let's run another combination here. So let me close everything. So now I increase in SB solution on orthogonal correctors to three. And let's go here probably for the best, best setup that will be least squares with the limited. C3. And also let's do it also for C2. C1, remember, is a perfect orthogonal mesh. So here we can get our way around using this non-orthogonal uh, correction. But it's one also you can go and put this one here. Okay, so in this case, I don't want to add the limiter. And let's run this case. Okay, and let's see what we have. So we didn't touch the convective part. We don't have it. We are focusing here in the non-orthogonal correction, the Laplacian part, the diffusive terms of the equation. Again, also we have it's time dependent, but also you can find a, a solution using a steady solver. with no problem. And there you are going to need to play with some the relaxation to just to iterate. We have done that in the previous two tutorial. Okay. So one thing that you, if you look here, you will see that the an orthogonal correction does not have any influence in the solution, actually. See that your initial res uh, residuals are all, always the same. So it doesn't have a strong, uh, a strong effect, probably in the initial iteration, but at the end does not have a big effect. Rod state, go here. In this directory, open this. We have everything. So remember, this is the the numerical solution that the agreement is perfect. But we're interested in looking behind doors in the gradient. So specifically, we're looking at this information. Okay, these gradients how were computed. Okay, and this. Okay, so as you go in, you will see that they are different because they rely on your mesh. Okay, so let me plot now here. So remember that here we're using different methods. Okay, so, and so here. And voila, so see that clearly we can see, for instance, in the orange one, but the orange should correspond, I think, I need to change the, the right legend, but the orange one should correspond to the polyhedra. See that the polyhedra and the quad mesh, the tree should be the quad. Okay, I need to uh, fix that. See that they have a very good matching just here, and then for the rest, it's very good matching. So by using the right method for the location, but also the right, a method to compute gradients see that we're smoothing every everything here. And this will be very important in the cases that you have chalk wave. That will be very important to have an accurate and stable non oscillatory computation of this gradient. Okay, so I hope you you get the main tech take away of this problem. Beautiful problem. I really enjoy this one. And just to show you the final part, you go into each specific one case, you will see that you have the part of you, so you can open also an estate file for post processing that particular case. So as you go load state uh, part of you. Okay, so. Now in this case, should files here, so this should be okay. And you should have this, okay? So see that here we already, so this is your numerical solution. Then you click here and you are going to have also the EDSAT solution. See that very good agreement, but also I play a little bit one more here so you can get the difference between the solutions. So here you see that you can plot that you can get this difference, okay, where you have more difference between the analytical and numerical solution, okay. So as you do the plot this in the 
quad and uh, the quad mesh is very it's much much smaller so here also you see the inf influence of your mesh and your final solution you see some error here but have in mind that it's very low that error that you have there okay so you have in this order of magnitude and something 10 to the minus 4 is less than 1 percent so the error that you are adding and if you increase your mesh as the 280 says you will reduce the truncation error not necessarily will be a better solution if you have models probably you will still have the model and errors but the truncation you will reduce that so you can plot that one and the other you can also do a comparison so there are two states is one is two uh, load state uh, and uh, let me go here is two so basically, well, in this case, I can go already know that it will open this file. So see here that you have numerical solution, your ad set solution. Okay, so it's clearly not much different. And then also you can play around a little bit and compare, for instance, this gradient with this gradient. Okay, and you can see that they're bounded in the different way. Actually, now it should be uh, this one gradient T and okay this one here okay so there are some differences so the x the, this one is computed probably it's not it's not the right way i should compute using the calculator so see that the exact solution is computed here in the calculator you put it and to compute also the exact gradients also you should derive this one and not do it numerically because you are going to add some noise which is the noise that i have here but you see that the ad set solution is a very good one so i think that is all for this case and i think we have already exercised all the skills when it comes to sv skins a little bit also for sv solution and now we're going to move into more realistic cases so the last three cases so the next one will be the chuck this chuck tube, tube, this is a very severe case. So we're going to see how to get a good agreement, how to reproduce the solution. This is the analytical solution. And, I, and, and actually we're going to get a very good agreement, but you will see that we need to adjust a few things there. So you know what to do. And then the other tutorial is uh, on the relaxation and steady solver. So we have this nice 2D case. And we're going to play with some the relaxation, but we already know what, what, what is happening there. So see here that if you choose too low, you will too low on the relaxation and on the steady solvers, you are going to lose time accuracy. So see here that 0 0.7, you have the time accuracy, but in this case you are losing. So your solution here is very stable, but it's not accurate in time. And see here that you compare different, no under relaxation and 0, 0.7 see so that you have very similar uh, behaviors. Okay, a little bit, you have the feeling that you will lose some accuracy here, but you're getting stability and 0 0.5. Okay, so thank you for your attention and see you uh, next tutorial. Bye.